Thanks to Golden Nugget Online Casino for sponsoring today's video. Welcome to Naval News with Subbrief. Today we're going to have an update on the Columbia class ballistic missile submarine currently under construction. Uh, Mr. Matt Sermon, the Executive Director of Strategic Submarine Program, Executive Office at Naval Sea Systems Command, yeah, that's his full title, <laughs> spoke at the annual Naval Submarine Symposium addressing some of the issues they're having with this program. He did confirm that the 84-month build time has been extended to 96 months, and this was previously reported and expected by things like the Government Accountability Office reports uh, from over a year ago, so this really was was not a surprise. But the update from him is, and to paraphrase him, uh, they're working every day to pave the critical path to have the Columbia class on patrol by 2030, specifically October 2030 is the patrol date for Hall 1. So the current program is currently uh, 12 to 16 months behind. They're kind of dividing that by saying it's 12 to 14. The cause of these delays are really because of the suppliers. And this is very specific. I'm surprised that they were as specific as they are about this in that it's not just like the nuts and bolts and basic supplies. It is major component suppliers are delaying construction of the Columbia class. And for example, they have repeatedly named one company, it's Northrop Grumman, that are building the turbines that are going to generate the enormous amounts of electricity that it's going to take to power the submarine and push it through the water. That's right, it's an electric submarine. So a Northrop Grumman is behind on those delivery dates, and that is the primary cause of the construction being delayed several months. Now, the Navy's 2025 budget that's been approved does have the USS District of Columbia, Hall 1 of the Columbia class, will be delivered, expected to be delivered on October 2027. And that is a critical date. If they can get that Hall 1 commissioned on October 2027, that leaves them a couple years to do sea trials and work all the bugs out before they go on their first patrol, deterrent patrol. And so it is likely that they will hit that deployment deadline if they make that 2027 date. It really comes down to that. If they don't, the delay in making the 2023 date could result in an extension of the current ballistic missile submarines being pushed back beyond their expected operational date. The submarine that is most likely to be affected by that is the USS Alaska, an Ohio-class submarine serving right now. Now, this would require her to do additional patrols in 2030 and beyond that she's currently not expected to make. Um, if the Columbia can't make it, USS Alaska is probably going to be the one that does so. In order for her to do that, she'll have to go through a 12 to 18 month dry dock period, extended refit period for a five or more year life extension to fill in that gap beginning in 2030. So, there is a knock-on effect to not making those, those delivery dates. And this is just one of the consequences of that. The Navy is expected to make a decision as to whether to extend the life of the USS Alaska in 2026 with that refit beginning in 2027. So we'll have to wait and see what they come up with. Uh, do you think they're going to make the 2027 deadline? What's your opinion? Will they even make the 2030 deadline? It's a bit of a gamble. That's why I partnered with Golden Nugget Online Casino, the sponsor of today's video. Now, if you enjoy gambling, Golden Nugget Online Casino has all your favorite games right on your phone. Over 300 real money games, including slots, blackjack, roulette, and live dealer. It's a Vegas experience right in the comfort of your own home. Or when you're in line at the grocery store or in the waiting room at the dentist's office, you can be sure that Golden Nugget Online Casino is safe and secure. New customers get $50 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Download the Golden Nugget Online Casino app right now and use my promo code SUBBRIEF and make any moment gold with Golden Nugget Online Casino app. Let's talk about the key features and technologies in the new Columbia class ballistic missile submarine. Now, years ago, whenever this program was being designed and initially funded all the way back in uh, 2017 or so, the bill expected cost of the entire program of 12 submarines was $109 billion for 12 hulls. 
But now in 2024, as they're getting into the construction of Hall 1, that cost has been revised to $134 billion. And I would expect that estimate to only go up as we get closer and closer to 2030. Now, this submarine is enormous. It displaces 20,000 800 tons. It is the largest submarine the United States has ever built, much bigger than the Ohio class. It is 560 feet long, and that's 186 yards long. Like an NFL football field is 100 yards. This is 186, almost twice as long as an NFL football field. She's 43 feet beam, or that's wide in Navy speak, and can make 20 knots in excess of 20 knots, 20 knots plus. And I want you to think about this real quick, all of you math nerds out there, how much power do you need to generate to push just over 20,000 tons through a saltwater medium? Yeah, it's a lot of energy that needs to do that. So this energy plant, this turbo electric drive and pump jet combination, which is the first time that the Navy's trying to do this with a submarine is a a very difficult technology to get right. And they know they need to have an enormous amount of generation, power generation, just to push it through the water. But there's also an integrated power system that's gonna power and manage the electricity for the entire boat. So they're gonna have everything from, you know, power, electric, uh, energy, storage uh, and distribution panels. Uh, all that's gonna be managed via hardware and software, as well as pushing the submarine through the water. The sonar version, which has my attention right now, much of that is still secret, but it's essentially just a large version of the array that's on the Virginia class right now. It is a large, large bow array or an LLBA array um, on, on this submarine. It will have anechoic coating for you know acoustic stealth purposes and other things. Uh, she will carry a battery of 16 missiles, 16 Trident D5 missiles, which is the current generation of missile that the Ohio class uh, carries. And finally, back aft, just above my head here, is the stern area system. A brand new type of control surface is being incorporated there. We'll talk about that in a second. First, I wanna talk about one of the major differences is the removal of the mechanical gears driving the shaft. The integrated power system is a crucial part of uh, managing power in the boat, including sending power to the electric motor that is going to turn the single shaft that is going to turn the propulsor at, outside the ship. So they're getting rid of a lot of these uh, mechanical gears that have all this kinetic energy going through these, you know, complex, you know, gear and groove type systems that can result in noise, noise generation. Uh, you e eliminate that entirely by not even using a reduction gear system at all and simply using a very large electric motor is going to be much quieter from day one than any kind of mechanical reduction system. So already we're expecting this thing, uh, as far as propulsion goes, to be very, very quiet. I should mention, if I haven't already, that it is nuclear powered. It requires a nuclear power plant to turn generators, tur turbines like you see here, to generate electricity to power this enormous draw, this enormous electric motor that is going to be installed. Let's talk about the four planes, uh, the surface control planes on the aft end of the ship. Uh, each one of these are canted at an angle or in an X uh, formation compared to a cross formation of, say, the Virginia class and other submarines like the Ohio class that the U.S. Navy has been, been operating. And all four of these control surfaces back there um, can, be, can be operated independently. That's kind of the big thing here. And by doing that, because they're operating independently, they can do much more uh, with them than they would in the old stern planes, dive planes configuration that we used to have. This, this new one provides more maneuvering force, so it will be more maneuverable than it would be if it didn't have this cross configuration. It also significantly reduces uh, the event of, say, a crash dive or a snap roll where you're operating at high speeds and you lose control of, say, the stern or dive planes and they default to the dive position or a left or right position, suddenly turning your submarine in a direction you did not expect. And when that direction is deeper, it is very concerning when that happens. This does not eliminate that chance, but it greatly significantly reduces the effect of it even 
happening. And if it does happen, it's not going to be nearly as drastic um, because they're all independently maneuvered. And something that most people don't think about is because we can tweak each one a little bit, and this is all done by software, by the way, we can actually assist the propulsor by beginning to rotate the water before it goes into the propulsor and pushed out the aft end of it. So there's that as well. And it also results in a much quieter uh, operation than the cross uh, rudder. So very good design. I'm glad they're putting on the ballistic missile submarine. It'll be interesting to see um, how it how well it performs during sea trials. This is the common missile compartment quad pack. Uh, there's four of these quad packs per Columbia class for a total of 16 missiles. This is where each uh, of the Trident D5 ballistic missiles will be housed and homed and taken care of. Uh, the, the Trident D5 can carry up to eight uh, warheads each. There are some exceptions to that, by the way, but just know for our purposes here today, one to eight uh, warheads. But these missile tubes are very complex in that they have cooling, uh, power to the missile, gas venting, uh, hardware and software that um, maintains and watches the missile and make sure that it's okay every single moment of every day, uh, you know, before operation or if it's just being, you know, deployed on the submarine, these missiles are continuously monitored and taken care of uh, by by these uh, silos and the operators, the missile techs that that operate these systems. This is the missile itself. She'll have 16 of these D5 missiles uh, around the world. And the purpose of this submarine is to take them out, submerge them somewhere uh, in the Americas, in the Americas, in the world's oceans, and just uh, hide them there. And that is part of the deterrent patrol. That's what they do. So um, each submarine has 16 of these. These missiles are 44 feet long. They're six feet in diameter, if you can imagine that. They're very large. And they can travel over 7,000 nautical miles to a target. To give you an idea of what that even looks like, I brought up Google Earth here for you, where you can see if we were off the coast of um, you know, Easter Island or off the coast of South America in the South Pacific, way to the east, we could shoot over the Pacific and hit the waters of the Persian Gulf. That is extreme range. We could also go the other direction too if we wanted to. I would encourage you to break out Google Earth and the distance ruler and just see how far these things can fly. They're really incredible. But there are problems, like I said in the beginning. Uh, big delays are happening at the shipyard that's assembling the submarine. For example, there's, there's two shipyards that do this, but I'm going to specifically talk about General Dynamics Electric Boat and Groton, Connecticut right now. They are assembling uh, the first hull of the submarine and they continue to fall behind their own projected production schedule. Right now, uh, they're building the Virginia class nuclear submarine and beginning work on this new Columbia class. And they told the Navy that they would be able to make 2.3 submarines a year by 2028. That's the goal. Each year, they're ramping up production a little bit at a time. The goal for 2024, according to the shipyard, is 1.5, one and a half submarines a year. But as of right now in 2024, that expectation has been lowered to 1.2. So we're not even meeting the production um, expectation this year. So it is less likely we're going to make up for that next year, even though that's exactly what they're trying to do, to make to make 2.3 submarines in year 2028, which would be a combination of Virginia class submarines and a uh, Columbia class submarine. So that's the plan here on Subbrief. We're going to be continuing to monitor the progress of this program and the shipyard as they get better. I do expect them to meet their goals. Uh, this is a good shipyard with competent workers. And I happen to know somebody that works on the Columbia program without saying his name out there. He has, you know, informed me several times that they will make that 2030 date. They have a plan. I'm holding him to it and we'll see how it goes. So uh, I look forward to the EB in Groton, Connecticut, ramping up their production. Let's begin there and then start making milestones. And remember to download the Golden Nugget online casino app right now and sign up using my promo code SUBBRIEF and make any moment golden with Golden Nugget online casino app.